Hello everybody, welcome to Mic Up or Shut Up. This is episode number nine. I'm here, I'm Chris, here with Angie, Bodie, and Reagan. And uh, once again, it's Halloween season, so it's our favorite time of year. Mm. I think we're going to keep uh, all the episodes this month themed with that in mind. So Happy Halloween. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty good. Do That's I have a good laugh? That's pretty good. With my good. deep voice. Do I, I would make a good Vincent Price. What's the, what's the thing that he did? The, the scary stuff? Oh, yeah, he was in Thriller. Well, he made a ton of scary oh, movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Thriller made, album yeah, where he, made, he says... That's what you're thinking of. Something, oh, 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 oh. No, yeah, that part, but then he yeah. said something all across the land. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's yeah, scary. I could that's I could do that voice. He's like the narrator. Well, I could... I could I, I, the point is, I could be that voice, right? Could you, I not be that voice? You could be that voice. You could yes, be that voice. Yes, you could. Yes. yes, I could be that guy. Ha, ha, ha. Deeper, but okay. <laughs> okay. I've, right. had, I've had my moment. All right. So uh, before we get into it, uh, I have to mention someone, a uh, loyal listener, has listened to all eight episodes so far. <laughs> shout so, out. Uh, yeah. Time. So uh, Aunt Libby wanted a shout out. She said she spoke to you and, uh, you know, I got an earful about how uh, you had promised to mention her on the episode and then you never did mention her and other people that we know got mentioned by name. I mean, she was, you know, saying things like, you know, you're sorry bastard. Really? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> she lied to you. Oh, me, no, though. wait a minute. I'm sorry. I said you were a sorry bastard. Yeah, yeah you're telling happens. the story wrong. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> she lied to you, though. <laughs> I never said anything about giving her a shout out or mentioning her in any way. But, you know, oh. we did chat. We did have a conversation. I watched uh, her son play music. And yeah, we talked a lot about the people that were dancing and, uh, you know, the fun times that they were having. She she gave me an M M&M. and M. I mean, we shared a moment. <laughs> all right, all <laughs> it was right. good times, but we didn't talk about this at all. Well, I don't know. I'm just telling you. So, telling you. well, all right then, okay. Libby. So, what is that about? <laughs> <laughs> so she uh, posed a question that she'd like us to answer on the podcast, and that question is: uh, If you uh, have to have insurance to have a vehicle, why does she have to pay for uninsured motorists? When she pays her insurance. Is it required? I don't know. I'm just telling you what she... That's, that is the question. Which so she wants she to know to why she has to pay uninsured motorists when there should be, by law, no uninsured motorists. Yeah. Right? Well, because Valid question. there are criminals. Well, I know the answer. Right. So, and uh, Well, tell us the answer, the, Mr. Know Everything. Well, the answer is that uh, insurance is a scam. Of course. And uh, that's why they force you to do it uh, by law. Right. So that is the reason why you have to do it. Well, no, I don't think it's a requirement to buy uninsured motorists. I think it's an it, option. It's an option. Well, technically, you don't have to buy it. You choose to buy it because there are idiots that out there who do not have insurance. And those are probably the people that will wreck into you. Well, you see, in Louisiana, we have what is called no pay, no play. And what that means is that if they're not paying their insurance, if they're an uninsured motorist, then... They have no legal recourse, so they can't sue you. Even if they're in the right and you're in the wrong, if they don't have insurance, too bad, so sad. They can't sue you legally. They can't. They can't file any litigation because they don't pay. They don't play. Now, it's been seventeen years since I've had any dealings with that. The law may be different now. I don't know, but that's my knowledge. Of Louisiana law. So move you behind the Louisy Louisiana. <laughs> That's what I like to say. Louisy Zizi Nana. <laughs> Louisiana. We call it Louisiana. Oh. No, we don't. No, we don't. We love where we live. Do you? Yes, All right, of well, course. Speak for yourself. Why would we not speak love where we live? Uh, because it sucks. Yeah. Because Why? It sucks. Talk to me about what sucks about it. Oh, it's so fucking hot and humid. And oh, because there's, there's no other place like that in the world. I mean, I'd like it to actually have four seasons. Okay. Even two. Two seasons would be nice. Not green to brown to dead. What do you know about seasons? I know we don't have any. <laughs> right. How do you know what it's like to have them? You would because if you I've have them pictures. and you're like, damn, I hate four seasons. <laughs> I've seen pictures. Right. But you never lived in it. I will tell Chris you. Chris has. It's very nice to have four seasons. You know what it is? It's nice to think that the grass is always greener on the other side. That's what's happening. You think... Oh, it would be so wonderful to live in New Mexico or 
No, I never thought that. Vermont. <laughs> Mm, I don't know about that one. But then you get there, and it's loaded with liberal snowflake idiots. And then you're comfortable. <laughs> well, I heard you talking, but uh, all I heard was, yes, Louisiana sucks. Is that what you heard? Yep. Where are you going to get better food? You can cook for me no matter where I live. With the proper ingredients that are not available outside of Louisiana. Amazon, boo. Amazon. That's what I used to do in Virginia. Where are you going to have Mardi Gras? I don't like Mardi Gras. You're a stick in the mud, that's why. Wow. <laughs> We're off topic. Way off topic. We're way why? Off topic. How did How we did get... There is How no topic. Happen? We're not scripted. We can blame We Libby can talk about this. whatever the hell we want to talk about. What do you mean? Off topic. Anyway, yes. Louisiana is my favorite place to be. <laughs> well... Once again, speak for yourself. Sportsman's so, Paradise. Yep. Okay. And I'm a sportsman. Yep. When's the last time you caught a fish or hunted? <laughs> Two, three years ago, maybe. Oh, okay. That's only because I'm poor as hell. <laughs> that don't have anything to do with where I live. Yeah. Anyway, carry on, man. If you'd like to support us, there is a button at the bottom. <laughs> support Bodie. Yes, because he wants to go Bodie fishing. is poor as hell. He wants to go fishing, there, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Poor as hell. Those are the words. The title of this episode may be Poor as Hell. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get into movies again uh, this episode. But before we do that, you had asked like two or three episodes ago to talk about a topic that we kept skipping over. So. A couple topics. So let's do it. Uh, talk about bed riding. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Okay. So, bed riding is this new trend that these young people are now into, which I find it hilarious. The term riding means wasting away or dying, something like that. Mm -hmm. But Decomposing. Right. But they're actually, it's a self-care thing that they're calling it. And what it is, is they try to do as much as possible in the bed instead of getting up. So if they take a day of bed riding, then they will try to maybe send emails from their bed, play on their laptop, on their phones, you know, so they can be sort of productive, but the goal is to not get out of bed at all, if possible, or as little as possible. And that is the new trend with these young people these days, you know, I guess 20s, you know, something like that around that age. And what's I your issue with that? Yeah, I well, don't see the problem. Well, my issue is, you know, I like to sleep a lot, and and you obviously think it's too much, but I know, especially with depression, they say it's not healthy to just stay in bed. You need to get up and get moving around. So if they're calling this a self care trend, like that is pointing them in the wrong direction. Mm. Let's have a poll. <laughs> is eighteen hours of sleep a day too much? No. That's what I want to know. <laughs> Okay, 18 I hours a day, is that too much or is that just enough? I don't want to sleep 18 hours a day. I want to be in the bed 18 hours a day with naps throughout. Well, listen, I think it's fair to say that some of my favorite activities take place in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I got no issue with that. The problem is, is that when you don't ever get out of it, like you can't just, you can't leave it at all. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Like small things cause the biggest bump in your road. And that's a difficult situation for me. But I'm still not thinking that 18 hours a day is healthy for anyone. I take the dog outside. So I go outside several times. Several? Several. How many is several? I mean, at least four. Whew. Four times. If Chris could sleep all the time, he would. Yeah. That yeah. Like, my last name is Rogers, which yes. we all know means that uh, I love sleep. Right. Your last name is Rogers, you love sleep. That is That's translated right. from the Greek for Raje, which means right. forever sleep. Well, you know, uh, one day Angie comes up to me and she says, Hey, I have found the perfect job for you. NASA is doing a study, and uh, they're going to pay people $18,000 to spend six months in bed. You can't get out of bed for the entire six months. And I was like, uh, I'm in. Yeah. You know? And then NASA said, uh, We're going to have to insert a catheter. And I said, I'm out. <laughs> I'll do it. 
Yeah. Is that study still up there? Like that? <laughs> Look, her eyes got this big. It's like yeah. she saw the yeah. sevens on the jackpot. You understand? It's like ding, 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 ding. I think you have to go to Houston. Six months in to, bed for eighteen thousand dollars. I'm all over. I'm that. in. I've had catheter before. It's not that bad. I don't know about that. She don't even care. You all can't I... get it. You can't even. You cannot leave the bed at all. Like you have to eat in the bed. You have. They have to rotate you and things like that. Well, I have a TV. And how do you poop? poop? How do you drop deuces? Um, I don't care. <laughs> I, yes, get, I know you don't I, care. I didn't get that far. I didn't get that far. I guarantee it's NASA. They got a plan. Yes. Believe me. If Freddy Krueger was going to come after me in my dreams, he would have his fingers would turn to catheters, and they would be chasing me down. <laughs> that's, that is that's that how just get the fear me. you yeah, have. That is my fear. Yes. That's Why is fear. that a fear? You as a re, you know it's an irrational fear. Right? I don't know. Shoving things up your pee pee hole does not seem like an irrational <laughs> no. fear. No, it, I mean, I'm no, saying it, being afraid of that it, just seems like common sense. On the surface, it doesn't really appear that it would be a favorite activity, but also sticking needles in my vein and withdrawing blood from my pool that I have a limited supply of also doesn't feel like it's a fun activity, but it's not something that I'm afraid of, right? Okay. It wouldn't be your favorite. No, I'm not afraid of getting needles stuck in, but right, I am afraid thing. of having needles shoved up my pee-pee hole. <laughs> I had a baby come out with no anesthesia. Believe me, a catheter is nothing. I'll take it. You have a much larger Thank you. hole Thank for you. babies to come that. out of. Oh, yeah, but it didn't feel good. <laughs> yes, I do know that. Yes. And I would have preferred anesthesia. Yeah. All right. Anesthesia would have been better. Yeah, well. Okay. And do you get a local anesthetic when they shove the thing in your I didn't get that far. As soon as I heard I'm pretty sure they don't give you a shot over. in your pee pee. Which, why would you want a shot in your pee pee? That would be even worse. Yeah, that'd be a I don't think pee-pee. that would be worse. And they don't have to do a shot to do local anesthetic. You can rub it with a Q tip, which sounds kind of nice. <laughs> 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 right? You want me to sign you up? <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean, you think it's dollars. harder to put it in that way? All I heard was harder. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I couldn't get past that word. I missed the whole. I'm pretty sure we're not on topic at the moment. What the hell is topic? What is happening? I mean, that's scary, right? We're talking about no, scary that's things. pretty scary. Yeah, Halloween is about scary things. And I can't think of a single thing scary. <laughs> spiders? No. Spiders not are not scary. Spiders. Than, no. Except for that big ass spider that what we have. What am I scared have. of? I don't even know what I'm scared of. <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> to jump out from behind a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she got such a victory. She wanted a trophy. You understand me? Yep. Come, we, we just try to scare each other all the time. We you did. scare me all the time. We used to be a lot more fun than we are. It's called life. It's called having kids. They destroy yeah. your lives. We Sorry, used to Reese. Be a lot of fun. I know you don't want to hear that, it's but it's true. You destroyed years. their lives. Yep. I know, right? It's hard to think of more fun things to do than the last 26 <laughs> years. We do all the fun things. Not apparently, anymore. apparently. Not anymore. Not anymore. All right. I'm too tired to do fun things. Huh. That. Whew. What? That. Oh, that too part. Tired. That part. That's what kids are saying these days. That part. Oh. <laughs> Fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> Kids. <laughs> you know they got a song and the song that they play in all over town and all over social media says, Fuck them kids. What you do? Fuck them kids. <laughs> That's the name of the song. Oh, okay. You have to Google it and listen to it. I can't do it right now, but you know. Right. <laughs> it, it's a it's a it's a song. Okay. I mean oh, yeah. okay, all right. Whatever. I will Google it after uh after the <laughs> podcast is over. What were we trying so, to talk about? So, uh, oh, wait, you were saying bed riding stuff. Well, no, and no. I totally blew that out of the water. No, I think we, I yeah, think I we think covered, covered it. it. Okay, okay. Oh, it's good? We're covered? So, so the, uh, oh. And Chris went to yeah. NASA. Yeah. So the, which totally lined up with that story. It but, did. But uh, so I guess the theme tonight is uh, scary movies. We talked about just our favorite movies a couple episodes back. Um, but I think tonight we should focus on scary movies. So I guess uh, not all of us here. Like scary movies? Is correct. That, is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. That is my favorite genre of movie. So, which is bothersome to my wife, but she'll have to get over it. It is my favorite also, but the problem is, it is hard to find a scary movie that scares me. Like that's true. That's how I rate a good scary movie okay. is I'm scared. 
And I do everything. I turn off the lights. <laughs> I get in my bed. The door is closed. Like, I make it the perfect environment to be scared. She well, sets the mood. Sure. For watching a movie. <laughs> You understand where I, this is I going? I know where you're going. I know where you're going. going. I know where but you're going. we're still struggling to have those fun activities in the bed. You understand? Yeah, because we don't have six kids. I mean. Right. Five pregnancies. That's all you get credit for. You got a twofer. <laughs> <laughs> Two for flinching. <laughs> So yeah, I didn't. I didn't even realize you set the mood and did all of this, you know, Chris preparation. Oh no, I, 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 I try to watch him in the dark. As yeah, well. he watches him in the dark. Yeah. He makes sure that all the lights are you on. Put in the candles house. on. No, I don't put candles. You know, <laughs> no, you don't want any more lights. Spray the room with a certain aroma. <laughs> you know, you don't have yeah. all of that going on. We can call, we can call ourselves to a marriage therapy. Yeah, I'm feeling a little <laughs> jealous of the movie now. I'm sorry. Forgive me. You don't like horror movies. No, but I like you. <laughs> <laughs> and she likes horror movies. Oh my god! I don't know what to tell you. Oh my god! I have watched many of movies like with the with the pillow in front of me, and he's. I'm like, I can't do this. I can. Oh, just a little bit longer. So. so, so to me, a scary movie is more than just uh, jump scares, which really is all scary movies are nowadays. It's just jump scares. To me, a movie. Uh, it's a horror movie, just like any other genre of movie. It requires a decent plot. It can't just be, oh, there's a bunch of campers. Correct. And then there's a guy with a machete. Correct. I, I like uh, a plot, you know. And uh, a nice director would be would be nice. You know I mean? I'm talking about, you know, who cares? Lighting, good lighting, camera angles, the whole deal. I mean, it has to be a movie just like any other movie. It can't just be some low-budget piece of shit. Because uh, there's a lot of blood getting splashed on the wall. No, that's not what a horror movie is. A horror movie has to have an atmosphere. You know, it has to create a lot of tension. It doesn't necessarily have to. I mean, as an adult, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be scared. I don't think of a movie. I can't think of the last time a movie scared me. But but to have the right atmosphere, you know, of horror in the movie and tension, worrying about characters surviving or being killed, uh, is very helpful to a horror movie, which is usually lacking in modern horror movies, in my opinion. Right. You know, but uh, so, I mean, it, it takes more than just blood and guts and machetes and boobs, although that, that does help. Mm -hmm. Boobs, I mean. The last the part. The boobs yeah. help. Yeah, the boobs The last help. part definitely boobs help. Help. We I, already talked about I, that. I feel like if a movie is a low-budget piece of shit, then they have to have a shower. Yeah, no choice. That's right. There's no choice. Because I'm not watching if you don't. Right. Right? Yep. But it, I like, too, when they have, say they have two people that you know, the killer is going to kill one of them, and they're showing both of them. And they're showing the killer creep up, and you don't know which one that's gonna get it. That if it's done right, adds a, a level for me in a movie. Yeah. Because it keeps you guessing. Yeah, you tension. don't just say, no, "Oh tension, yeah, she's yeah. getting killed." You know, that's good to me. And I always love when they do it right. A good car wreck. When you don't see it coming, they're mm. talking, and yeah. all of a sudden, bam! You know, that always gives me kind of a little jolt of excitement. Right. Why are you staring at me Jolt like that? Jolt of excitement. I'm I just, know. I'm like, I'm just what? feeling like I'm jealous of the whole movie thing. You don't like people dying either, which is why we never agree on movies. <laughs> oh, I don't like people dying either. No. Let me tell you all something, and I, want to, I wanted to make this clear. I like to laugh. I like to have a smile on my face. I like to be happy and enjoy the world that I live in. That's what I like to do. So when... I'm faced with the reality of mortality by watching five million people get murdered and dead and their blood and guts splattered all over the wall or ghosts crying, crawling around under their beds and uh, raping them, squeezing their titties and you can't see nothing. You understand? This does not make me happy. I like to smile. I like to laugh and I like to be happy. Why do these things that are normally associated with the most depressing and terrible thoughts that a human has to go through in their lifetime, why does that please you? Because while I'm immersed in a good movie, I don't think about anything but that movie. I don't have to think about life. I don't have to think about troubles. Nothing but that movie. And we can't watch a funny movie because we disagree on what's funny. Oh, because you have no sense of humor. Oh, I have the best sense of humor. No, you have none. 
And we will confer to ask your brother what your sense of humor is like. We've does already she, discussed it. We've does already she discussed have it. a sense of humor? Well, you Absol- know what? Absolutely not. She I don't even none. have to argue that point because all people need to know is what movies he likes to know that he does not have a good sense of well, humor. Well, thankfully, he doesn't recommend comedies. So we're well, good. that's not true. Noises Off is not funny. You watched? You watched? <laughs> no. I did not. Well, I'm then. Just, I that's didn't. right. I'm that's why I didn't that. say anything about Noises yeah, Off. I didn't either. I, I, I'm sorry. I take it back. I, never, I didn't never watch it, but I was just trying to come back. You know, you have to have one of those quick comebacks. <laughs> well, I'll be so. recommending a horror comedy tonight, so. A horror comedy? Yes. Yeah, Cocaine uh, Bear. No, not Cocaine oh Bear. Yeah, Don't he thought me. that sucked. I thought yeah, it was hilarious. It sucked. It I was actually did think that one was a little funny. Right? Right. See, we share humor. This we laugh. This is why I recommend the movie. No. <laughs> I couldn't. We didn't get through it. I couldn't finish it. Yep. I it was funny. It. It no, was funny. No, it wasn't. No, yes, it I was. liked the IKEA guy. That's Did you like Pulp Fiction? Yes. Also funny. Sure. Loved it. Loved yeah. every minute of it. You Same know. Thing. You know what was not in Pulp Fiction? A cocaine bear. Correct. <laughs> that would have been. So a I think there's a correlation there. You know what else was not in Pulp Fiction? What? Boobies. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah. It would have been how much no, better? It would, oh my god, that would have taken it to the next level. Right? Yeah, it would have yeah. been Academy Award. Yep. like twenty twenty. I think they won like fourteen. It would have won like twenty. <laughs> you know, that's what would have happened. That should I'm sorry. that should be a category. Biggest boobs. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah, that it doesn't have to be the biggest. Well, it would help though. It'd be, it'd be <laughs> I mean, nice. How did we get on the top of I don't the know. boobs? Well, we because boobs, because boobs are awesome, and they're in movies. And I'll tell you what. Boobs are universal because uh, when I was a bell, I was standing at the bell desk one time. Uh, this woman with rather large boobs was coming down, and uh, I went <laughs> like that. And uh, so a guy that was in the bell closet opened up the door, walked out, and said, "Is there somebody with boobs out here?" <laughs> that is a true story. So all you had that to is do a true was story. motorboat, yep, and he that's knew. It. He knew in motorboat. <laughs> <and he knew. laughs> yep. Jesus true story. True story. I have a lot of great Aww. Bellman stories, which I will share during the course of the podcast. Believe it. And they're not just for men. Women enjoy no, them, that's too. That's right. That's right. In okay. fact, when women enjoy them, I, I tend to enjoy them <laughs> even more. <laughs> That's I next level. Okay, I, that's Dave, next you're, level. You're crossing that, you're crossing that line. Well, I don't know. Buddy. I think we should. That should be next episode. Of what, that's yeah. what we're going to talk about. Women enjoying boobs. Yep. yep. <laughs> All right. So, let me tell a story about that. I've been watching horror movies for as lo- literally as long as I can remember. So that's I, just I, true. Yep. As long as I can remember. So as long as Ray can remember. So uh, there's two stories about when I was younger watching horror movies that I really enjoyed. One is uh, in 1981. I was seven years old. Okay. And uh, John Carpenter's Halloween aired on television. All right. Michael Myers? Yep, Michael Myers. Okay. So uh, I'm spending the night at my grandparents' house. On which side? Mom's side. Okay. And uh, they had a uh, couch that turned into a, a you know a bed. A, a sofa bed? A sofa bed, yes. So uh, Aunt Becky is there with me. All right, so we're we got the bed pulled out. Well, we going all out on the shout lights. outs. Oh yeah, <laughs> nothing, nothing but shout outs. Yep. So, lights are out. Grandma and Grandpa's in bed. Me and Becky in the living room, lying on the couch, watching Halloween. Right. Obviously, I'm seven years old. Never seen it before. Loving it. Totally into the movie. Right. We get all the way to the end, the part where Michael Myers grabs the boyfriend, holds him up, nails him to the wall. Right. She, of course, I jumped. She starts screaming her head off, wakes up uh, grandma. She comes running into the living room, fussing at us for waking her up, makes us turn the movie off. I don't see the, I don't see the completed movie because there's no internet for like five years. Wow. <laughs> you know, it takes me, you know, because there was no way for me to watch it. I was seven. So I, it took me years to finish watching that movie. Mm-hmm. Now, when I was, I think, around five years old, we can jump back in time a little bit, when I was like, I think I was five, because uh, there was a movie called Day of the Animals, starring a whole bunch of people. Leslie Nielsen was in it. It's about animals that uh, start attacking people because of global warming. It's ridiculous. It's like the happening on but, the animals. Uh, yeah. So, right. So, uh, I, I, I could not find confirmation of exactly when the movie aired on television, but I'm guessing it. It happened around 1979 when I was five because I remember the house that we lived in and I was five. I know I was five when we lived there. So I'm assuming I was around five, six years old. So I'm in the, I'm in the bedroom, uh, my, my parents' bedroom, all by myself, watching the movie, okay? The movie's almost all the way over. It's like the last, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like left of the movie. Becky and Jimmy come over to visit. 
So they asked where I'm at. Mom says, oh, he's in the, he's in the uh, bedroom watching a movie. So Becky comes in to talk to me. She sees the movie. She's just now, she starts watching it with me. There's a scene where a guy, this old man goes into his kitchen and there's a bunch of rats on the table and the rats start jumping on his face and kill him. She starts screaming her head off, runs out of the bedroom. Mom comes in and decides, well, maybe this movie's uh, a little too rough for a five-year-old to watch. She turns it off. Oh. Okay. Now, I was so young back then that when I got older and I tried to figure out what movie it was so I could finally see the end, I could never figure out who it was because I, 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 I didn't know who Leslie Nielsen was. I, I, didn't, I couldn't remember any of the stars. You know, there was nothing specific that, that stuck out to me except for the rat jumping on the guy's face. And every time I would ask someone, you know the movie where the old man gets, you know, his face eaten off by rats? Everybody would tell me no. It was not until 2013 that somebody I knew said, oh, yeah, that's Day of the Animals. Ooh. So I went out and I bought the DVD and watched it. It took me 34 years to finish watching that movie. So the moral of the tale is, uh, unless you have a couple of decades, don't watch movies with Aunt Becky. <laughs> <laughs> that's the moral. Don't watch movies with Aunt Becky. That's how I had to watch Braveheart. Speaking of... With Aunt Becky? In Virginia, believe it or not. I wasn't with Aunt Becky. But I was in Virginia at a friend's house, and we went to go to the theater to watch Braveheart. We paid our ticket prices. We got our popcorn. We went in there and got, you know, sat down with our drinks and started watching the movie. The movie comes on, and it plays halfway through. And you know the part where... The entire army turns around, raises up their skirts, and moons the other side yep. with their ass. Uh huh. Right after they did that, and you see the guy shooting arrows, and one of the person gets hit in the ass with an arrow. <laughs> yeah. That's where the screen goes black. <laughs> Completely black right there. And we're like, what's going on? Apparently, there was a thunderstorm outside. It was pouring down rain, terrible weather. The theater lost electricity. They refunded everyone's ticket price, and you went home. Half a movie. And I didn't get to watch the rest of it for like, I don't know, five years. It was crazy. You saw it in Virginia? In Virginia. I also saw Braveheart in Virginia at the movie theater. Mm -hmm. We were not in the same theater. Not I was in Norfolk. Okay, well, I was in Richmond. But I wanted to take Jeffrey, who was like 12 at the time, I think, Mm -hmm. and Aunt Becky would not let him go. Can you believe it? I had to go by myself. And you went to the movie? That's correct. That's terrible. I love movies. (laughs) <laughs> I hate people who talk during the movies, so I'd rather go by myself and enjoy the movie. Oh. And you saw the whole movie, not just half of it? All of it. That's Great. what Roger's thinking. Right. And I stayed through the credits. Oh, okay. It's kind of a scary movie, isn't it? Braveheart? No. I mean, he no. gets drawn and quartered. He sure does. Right? Yeah. And his guts are all ripped yeah. out yeah. and pulled out with hooks and I mean, it might be things. a horror, I technically. I mean, it's not really. I'm just saying. Yeah, this. well, they label so many things horror now, it's oh. ridiculous. Okay, so... I have a list of what I consider to be the greatest movies ever made. Horror. Greatest horror movies ever made. Top five. And I have some other ones that's like my favorite in certain genres. So I gave the rest of you the assignment to come up with a list of horror movies, but I don't think everybody uh, did their assignment, which means we may have less people on the podcast next episode. I did my assignment. Oh, okay. I did. My favorite horror movie of all time is Braveheart. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> he has a fear of being drawn right. to border, and that's the only one there is no right. other horror okay, movie okay buddy no, you said you liked Alien I mean, Alien's sci-fi yeah but it is, it is it is sci-fi fiction. but it is also horror yes Alien is considered horror you have to think all the time they're cowering and the aliens are hunting them like you know can I cars. tell you a story the first horror movie that I've ever watched I was 13 years old And I decided with my sister, who was 18 years old, that we were going to watch The Exorcist. Ooh, good choice for your first movie. And we watched the movie, and I was so scared to go to sleep after that movie. I couldn't turn the lights off. (laughs) I couldn't go in my own bedroom by myself. I was basically wrapped around my sister's leg for the entire remainder of the evening. And that wasn't enough because she was scared just like me. So we weren't doing good together. I and my sister, 18 and 13 year olds, both slept with my mother for two weeks following that movie because we wouldn't go in our own bedrooms. This is why your boy don't do horror. And you never would have imagined that you'd 
marry a girl that had been named after that movie and your life would be a nightmare yep. for the rest of your life. Right. She she living that horror movie every correct. day. That's correct. She is literally named after Her head that doesn't movie. spin and she yeah. doesn't what eat you up mean? pieces <laughs> What you yeah. mean you it don't no spin? Idea. <laughs> what you mean it don't spin? Oh, it spins. <laughs> she is that person. Okay, Reagan. So, um, let's hear your uh, list of horror movies. Well, I so love... I can make fun of them. I love The Conjuring uh, whole movie set or whatever, except The Nun. I fell asleep in The Nun, and I never finished it, so I'm guessing that one really wasn't that good. Uh, and then the Insidious movies, I like all of those. Um, I, I mostly like them because they don't have the... Every time you think they're going to scare you, they don't. So that's a relief. I, I can't stand when you know it's coming, and then someone pops out, and then you're like, well, I saw it coming. I'm not scared. So that's one reason why I like them. Um, a couple of other movies I really like uh, is The Invisible Man and which one? The Hunt. Which one? The recent one. I think it came out around 2020 or so. Okay. Elizabeth Yeah, Walsh, the, right? the, the poo-poo yes. one. Okay. You got but you. that's the only one I saw and I thought it was really good. Well, I know you did. So. There you and go. she said The Hunt. Oh, yeah, The Hunt. Actually, I enjoyed The Hunt. The Hunt was good. Is that the one where the rich people get like other yes. people to come to the lodge and then they say we're hunting you yes mm -hmm. and they running from them the whole time yes, yeah. yes. That, actually, that movie was actually quite enjoyable I, I did enjoy that movie right all the liberals gathered yeah. no, the no, no no you're not making a political statement literally in the movie it is liberals who right. kidnap people yeah right they, they spell it out they say we're liberals kidnap yeah. people yeah ba ba like they connect conservatives like right, literally right. they want yeah. yeah less of those people Hillary, in their world yeah um I can't remember the, the name of them actress that is the main character uh she's in that um peacock series about the ai i know what you're saying oh man i'm so terrible with names on doesn't matter fly, but yeah <laughs> but anyway so that movie's good that movie that movie I, that is the only movie on your list which is decent because the only one the on other your movies list. you listed the conjuring and insidious. insidious yeah those movies are in my opinion everything that's wrong with horror today it's all just jump scares yeah you liked friday the 13th the original one, not the crap remake. Okay, whatever. You know what's really crap is what is the one where they make you believe that it's like some CCTV in-home security camera footage of someone sleeping oh, in that, their bed and then the door oh, opens. Oh, like yes, yes, that, that, like What kind of doo-doo that? Movie, that, that movie was pure doo-doo. It was is, slow. And there's like four of them. And everybody loves them. That's the thing. People have argued about how good they are. They are slow as crap. That's correct. And it's all poop. Yeah, total poop. I've yeah. watched them all. The payoff at the end, slow. the payoff at the end is not worth the time it takes to get to it. No, really, you could fast forward into the last yep. thirty minutes and just yep. watch that. Right. Juice is not worth the squeeze. No, it's not. The juice is not worth the squeeze. So, oh, I do yes. want to add. Mm -hmm. Um, my daughter Cameron, since we're name dropping. Um, <laughs> what's up, Cameron? Woo woo woo! <laughs> when she was at school. She said, Mom, I watched this amazing movie. We had a movie night. I watched Hereditary. You've got to see it. It's amazing. I said, okay. It's a horror movie. You know, yeah. I was always yeah. looking for a good horror movie. Put that crap on. <laughs> watched it. Literally one good scene. Yeah. Not a good part. Like not one little short scene. I can tell you what happens right now. Yeah. So that no one has to watch it. But I don't no, know. No, a lot of people do like it. So don't, don't but, do that. I literally was like, Cameron, how did you like that shit? Like, I made myself watch it to the end. It no, was crap. Lots of people like that movie, yeah. It, it had a lot of potential, and there were some parts of it that I did enjoy, but overall, I, it didn't do me but the way I... One I, part I liked, that's it. Yeah. Oh, well. No, at least we're in agreement on some things. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Angie, let's, uh, let's see what you have. You should be surprised. I got a list. Angie, what is on your list? <laughs> Tell us. Uh, number one, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Correct. Yes. Keanu Reeves, one on the rider, Gary Oldman. Francis Ford Coppola. That's a cool ass name. It it's is, actually. It is. I think I'm going to change my name. <laughs> <laughs> to Bodie Ford Coppola? No, no, but you know, if you got a, if you got a cool name though. I'd have to think for a while to come up with it. But, <laughs> There's a know. wine. He he owns a wine. Yeah, he does a wine. Yeah, a crap right? wine. A crap wine. He's also anyway. Nicholas Cage's, Cage's uncle. Yeah. So I'm just saying. Well, I don't know if it's a crap wine because I don't get it, but it's not expensive. Yeah. Correct. Right. 
My next is What Lies Beneath with Michelle Pfeiffer and Harrison Ford. Mm-hmm. It's a ghost story. Yeah. I've seen it. I, I just didn't think it was scary. Like, I like the movie, the plot and everything, mm-hmm. but I just... It scared the shit out of me. Well, you're a wuss. I, you have no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Um, my next one is The Others with Nicole Kidman. Okay. It's a ghost yeah. story I, I'm approving well. so far. Yeah, three out of three. My next one is Wolf with Jack Nicholson and my man James Spader. And right. Michelle Pfeiffer again. Yep, yep. Never heard of those. I have. I saw it, but it was a long time ago. That it one isn't, would it probably isn't. be willing to watch again because it's been so long, and I obviously didn't hate it. Yeah, it's not scary. It's more suspenseful. Right. And yeah. Yeah. It's not. It's not right. A jump out at you type of horror movie. It's. it's yeah. It's not really. Yeah. It's more of a thriller. I, I guess. don't really yeah. do like horror like. It's oh, great we know. though. It's great yeah. though. Jack Nicholson looks like a werewolf. He before does. The makeup. So yeah. Well, Jack Nicholson is probably. The best horror person, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. We already know about the one with the, the thing, right? Yeah. With the thing? Yeah, you know, the hotel. The I'll the be shining. Talking, oh. I'll, I'll be talking about that. My list yes, is coming yes, up. Yes. Um, my next one is Fright Night, which has already been a recommended movie. The original Fright Night. The original Night. Not, Fright the, Night, not yeah. the poo-poo remake. Not the, not the Colin Farrell one, yeah. correct. Um, Wolfman with Benicio Del Toro and Anthony Hopkins. Chris doesn't really like it because he doesn't no, like the CGI. It, it's okay. It's but okay. I thought it was great. Um, the final girls. Mm. Make sure you girls. Ex- yeah, ex- yeah. There is a movie with the the same actors is in called the final girl. Singular, and that movie, doo doo. I mean, <laughs> I I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Grab some toilet paper before do, you press play. Do. You heard it him? is terrible, but the final girls, plural, is amazing. Yeah, it's really Well, good. that's it's always amazing. the case. Girls, plural, <laughs> yes, is much better than yes, girl, sir. singular, yes, sir. right? Yep. So, my next one kind of plays on Chris's, fa- one of Chris's favorite movies, Dr. Sleep. I love That Dr. was Sleep. a good movie. Once again, it didn't scare me. Well, one little part kind of did, but... It was, it was suspenseful. It didn't necessarily scare me, but I got hyped. Like, when I, I did, down, I I did enjoy that one. Yeah. But you got to watch it right after you watch The Shining. Yes. So, dedicate your whole night to it. Fantastic. Um, an old school movie, and I don't know if y'all remember this. Chris hates it. It's fine. <laughs> I remember watching it and being terrified. Waxworks. Oh, my God. I just remember going to a sleepover and watching it and just being terrified. But the movie that fucked me up the most was The First Power. What? That movie with, <laughs> with Lou Diamond Phillips. Oh, my God. Scared the shit out of oh me so God. bad. It's about possession. I don't like it. I loosely remember it. Yeah, like, it's, not it's, really... it's not worth remembering. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like I... Yeah. Sorry, I had a long list. No, that's, that's right. my list. No, that's, that's the okay. only ones I really like. That's okay. I, I was not allowed to put like Hocus Pocus and Practical Magic and things like you that. You were not allowed. Not yes, I did Chris not allow. Chris said it's not yeah, horror. The Disney I did not allow. Scary it. movies yeah. are not no, at all true horror movies. I said <laughs> true horror movies. Hocus Pocus yeah. or. Uh, what's the one where they switch? <laughs> the only way uh, a movie with Bette Midler would be a horror movie is if it was her private sex tape. Oh, oh okay. that <laughs> would definitely be horror. Then it would not be good. Then and it would be scary. Absolutely everyone would be scared to death of it. Yes. True story. That's a fact. That's it. Okay, your turn. Okay, my turn. Who was the doctor one? Doctor Who? Doctor Sleep. Sleep. Doctor Sleep. It's a sequel to The Shining. Doctor Sleep. Oh, is it? It's a sequel to The Mm -hmm. Shining. Except like a legit sequel. Yes. Yes. This is what happened. This is what happened. So Stephen King writes The Shining. I think it was the second novel about a haunted house and a haunted hotel. I mean, Uh, so then um, Stanley Kubrick makes it into a film, to which Stephen King hates. Stephen King hates the film. Um, the the film does divert from the book quite a bit, you know. It has the it has the basic concept, but it but it, uh, it does not follow the book very closely, which in my opinion is great because just the, details though. I but mean, the not book like sucks. A huge yeah, plot the, change, and, yeah. But... I actually think the book sucks. The book is so slow, in my opinion. The book is so slow. He, what he did, in, in my opinion, is he streamlined the movie. You know, he took the best concepts and he just ramped them up. Okay. So, that, but so Steve, uh, Stephen, sorry. So Stephen King hates hates the movie. Okay. Well, did you know so, Stephen King was an idiot? Yeah, Stephen King is an idiot. Yeah. But okay. uh, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. No, no, brilliant right. writer. But uh, full blown. Starting idiot. to fade out in his older age. Right. But uh, yeah, he brilliant. But yeah, he's a moron. Right. So carry on. So what happens is, um, because The Shining was such a successful movie, 
that most people think, you know, when they think of The Shining, they don't think of it as a novel, they think of the movie. So, um, what happens in the novel is completely different than what happens in the, the ending. Of the, the, in the novel, the, the hotel burns down. And in the, of course, in the, in the movie, it, you know, still there. Right. So they decided that, and he, and Stephen King did write a sequel to The Shining, a, a novel called Dark and Sleep, mm-hmm. which I didn't read, but I'm going to. But anyway, point is, they decided that they would make the movie uh, Doctor Sleep, and they would combine um, what Stephen King liked about his novel with what people remember from the movie The Shining, directed by Stanley Kubrick. They sort of com- they fused the two together to make the movie, um, which some parts of it worked, and some parts of it, in my opinion, did not work. Okay. But, you know, nonetheless. I mean, it was a decent movie. I thought movie, it was really but, good. But and that movie just came out like several years ago. Yeah, it's, like, it's a you recent know, it's, movie. So, I mean, it came out a long time after. But me and Tanner watched it one day, like one night. We watched The Shining first, mm-hmm. and we watched Dr. Right, Sleep right. right after. I feel like the end sort of is a bit of a letdown of uh, Dr. Sleep. I liked Sleep. it, though. But, uh, you know, whatever. Rebecca Ferguson, they, it put her in the stratosphere. They did put her some, they did put some intense moments in there, which I the did woman, like. The mm-hmm. woman who, uh, they did flashbacks to The Shining, and, and of course they had to hire a different actress to play, um, oh my God, I can't remember her name. What the Shelley hell? Duvall. Shelley Duvall, thank you. So she did a great job of imitating Shelley Duvall. She looked like Shelley Duvall, and she really... Her tone her, and everything. Yeah, her inflection and her voice matched perfectly, so that was, that was done well. But, Nonetheless, okay. So let's get to the moral Wait, of the story is Stephen King is an idiot. Yeah, Stephen King is a moron. Okay. I have one more I forgot to list okay. because it's a TV show. All right. It only lasted three seasons, and um, it's called Hannibal, which is supposed to be Hannibal Lecter right. from Silence of the Lambs. Right. Um. It is amazing. I, I just really loved it. Every episode was packed with stuff. I mean, it, it really, it's. It focuses in on Hannibal, and I, I believe it's like the detective that's trying to catch him. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I would go, I would watch it again. It was really really good, and the it ends. Okay, it's not one of those okay. shows that oh, right. we just didn't redo it. Sure. They're like three seasons, and it ends. And I thought the ending was absolutely phenomenal. It you know the way it ended. There's no question yeah. of. Oh, what happened to this? And who did this? And it's it ended. Well, I really thought it was good. I have and not it has seen it. Mads Mickelson in it, right. who mm. Angie loves. Yep. Yes. In fact, I, I couldn't look at him the same when he did that Harry Potter movie. Oh, he was double. All, oh. all I could see was Hannibal. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I have to check it out. I have not seen the Hannibal series. I'm aware of it, but I have not seen it. Okay, so let's get to the list of really awesome movies. <clears throat> My, our movies so, were all awesome. Right. It's what we like. Yep. My wife told me not to include this movie in the list, but uh, she doesn't tell me what to do. So, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that not a joke? I thought it was a joke. I'm sorry. So, uh, my number one horror movie of all time is Jaws, which is the greatest movie of all time. So, also not a horror movie. No, Jaws is a horror movie. Again, yes, you're, Jaws you're... is a horror movie. You gotta I understand, understand how long ago it was made. Back right, then, that was it. scary. I get it. Well, it's not scary though. Yep. It's more of a drama to me. No, because Jaws is is it gonna get him. It's gonna get him. It's gonna get her. It's gonna get him. <laughs> oh, What's that's how you define bit? horror. If something's gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of. Yeah, I'm gonna go underwater. I'm just gonna, gonna, gonna throw get that out you. There. <laughs> well, yeah, that you know that's why people are scared to be in uh, the ocean. Yeah, I guess it. it in, it just it just is hard to put that into a horror category for me, even okay. though I know what you're saying, right. and I know that it it probably is that, right? It probably is listed that way, but it just doesn't feel like that. So when I say I don't like horror movies, it doesn't really include those types of movies that don't really feel <laughs> like horror. Well, think of it this way. If you got in a boat accident and fell overboard, right? You're like, oh my goodness, this is shark infested waters. Mm-hmm. Once you got back on the boat, you would be like, oh, thank goodness, I am safe. That's and a then a, a shark busts into the boat. <laughs> that's your worst nightmare. That's definitely hard. Yep, it's hard. Okay, I'm sorry. No, that's okay, I that's all right. I just wanted to say no. that I didn't right. think that that was a horror. Well, that's okay. Uh, everybody has opinions and some of them are right and some of them are wrong. Right, and I already told you that mine was likely wrong, but it just doesn't feel like sure. it's a horror. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. So, uh, number two on the list, uh, The Shining. Classic. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, it is, yeah. 
one of the greatest horror movies ever made. I don't think anybody can deny that. Nope, no, no argument from anyone, amazing. right? That's oh. a movie that has to be watched more let, than once. Let me let me tell you something. Because I didn't realize, like, the first time I watched yep. it, I missed so much stuff. Right. Yes. Well, let me tell you something that uh, you have missed, and there's a debate online about it. I think I know the answer. I'm going to put it out there at the podcast night. Just uh, the chair thing? If, uh, yes. If you are listening, Creative Learning, uh, we're going to have to get together, and I'm going to tell you a lot of things that I think about The Shining. <laughs> he does a lot of videos about The Shining. This guy's on YouTube, and he goes in-depth into The Shining about a lot of stuff. So, Collative learning? Collative learning, yeah. So let me tell you something about The Shining. The uh, most famous scene, the river of blood that pours out of the elevator, believe it or not, is a miniature. That is not a full-size set. Where oh, you mean it's not 10, an 000, actual river of no, no. blood? I mean, it's not a set where <laughs> 10,000 gallons of blood are poured out of it because you can't tell that it's a miniature. Okay. You cannot tell. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about it is... Uh, he shot that scene, I don't know how many times. You know, Kubrick is a perfectionist. I mean, he was known as 50-take Kubrick. He would make people do just ridiculous amounts of takes. And while they were filming The Shining, he did that scene over and over and over and over again to get it exactly how he wanted. Now, what you never noticed before is that whenever the blood starts to pour out, something is inside that river of blood. Something falls down on the floor and is inside the river of blood. And if you look again, next time you watch the movie, you can see an outline of something in the blood that... Drops down on the floor, stays put, but the blood kind of is flowing around it. And there's a lot of debate about what the hell is in that in that river of blood. Because whatever it is was intentional. Kubrick was a total genius. He was an asshole, but he was a complete genius when he came to making movies. And he was very detail-oriented. And there was nothing on screen that he didn't want there. So whatever the hell is in that river of blood, he made sure was, was there. So a, a lot of debate on what it is. And what I think it is, is a chair. I think it's a chair. Whenever you, whenever you look at, there's a lot of people that like have like altered the lighting of the scene so you can kind of see the shape and everything. But and, and to me, it looks like a chair that has fallen down. You can kind of see the back and where the seat and the legs are and stuff. And the reason why I think it is a chair is because chairs are very important in the movie. Uh, when you when you watch it again, you'll notice there are chairs present in scenes where they don't need to be. And in fact, uh, what's interesting is I noticed that in every single scene of the movie, someone is either sitting down. Or there is something to sit on, a bench or a chair. In every single scene, every one. Like, for example, whenever the flashback of the little girls being murdered, you know, they have the flash frames of their dead bodies in the hallway and stuff. In the hallway, there's a chair laid over on the side. There's no reason why that chair should be there. You know, I, so it was, it was put there intentionally. You know, chairs are like in The Godfather. When you see the, empty, the picture of the empty chair, you know, chairs sort of represent death, loss. So I think that was the the theme that he was going for with it. There's a lot of things. Like when, when you watch the movie again, you'll see like Shelley Duvall's walking down a hallway and there's a ton of chairs stacked up against the hallway. Or, you know, she's down in the basement and there's a chair set up for somebody to sit on. I mean, there's a lot of things where chairs are put where they didn't, they didn't need to be to make the scene work. So he intentionally put those chairs in there for a reason. I don't know what that reason is, but that's just something I noticed about the movie. Okay, well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can't somebody ask anyone that helped make the movie what it was yes nobody knows he didn't tell anyone no one knows what it is yeah there's a huge yeah this guy that i'm talking that i was mentioned earlier collative learning he has gotten access to uh a lot of material that kubrick you know he got like kubrick does like a little museum deal you know but he kept all of his notes and shit like that uh blueprints for the movies you know film sets and stuff like that and he has had access to all of that so Nobody knows. Nobody knows what's in the river of blood. It's a big debate, you know. Now, I mean, I may not be right, but I feel like that is a good possibility. Okay. So I'm just saying. I just river of blood. Yep. Chair. Chair. Yep. Mm -hmm. Got it. So bloody chair. There's a lot of YouTube videos about it. Look them up. Oh, look them I will. Up. Oh, so looking them up. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> I want to do it right now while we're talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Number three. John Carpenter's. The Thing. The right. Thing? Yeah. The original? No, the, the original is uh, called The Thing from Another World. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing is a remake of that movie. Is that the one Reese was talking about last time? Yes. The Thing? Mm hmm Yes. The Thing. It's very good. Yeah. I watched that movie so many times. You remember whenever we were younger? Uh, I don't uh, Hell, I don't know how old we were whenever uh, the movie was in theaters, but I was young. I don't know, seven, eight, something like that. And Dad said, uh, out of the blue one day, he said, you want to go see a movie? 
I was like, yes, I do. He's like, what do you want to go see? So I said, The Thing. So he takes me. I see The Thing. I love it. I come back home. You start pitching a fit. It's not fair that I got to go see a movie and you didn't get to go see a movie. So he said, okay, fine. I'll take you to go see the movie. But then he took me to go see it with you too. So I got to see it twice because you pitched the fit. Yes, thank you. Well, you yes. know what? You were always the favorite. And that's why my life was miserable growing up. <laughs> she never cried but... to see my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe if your thing had grown and taken shape like this thing, maybe she would. Uh, I'm sorry, that's unfortunate. Isn't there two remakes then? <laughs> yes. yes. So the first remake is the one you're talking yeah. about? Yes. Okay, well, that's Russell. what I meant. Yes. Thank you. Yes, the good one. Okay. Lastly. Well, not lastly. I'm sorry. Number four. <laughs> math is hard. You no, know, math is hard. You already know I don't like math. Poltergeist. It's a classic. I mean, yes, it it, classic. I could watch yep. that movie I lots that, of times. I consider that to be the the best haunted house movie ever made. They're coming. Yeah. They're here. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Another interesting tidbit about that movie is uh, when you watch the credits, it says uh, written by Steven Spielberg, directed by Toby Hooper. But that is not true. It's directed by Steven Spielberg. Secretly, he directed that movie. The reason why no, this is true. The he reason why the reason why uh, that is true is because uh, whenever he signed his contract to uh, direct the movie E.T. in his contract, he said that he could not work on another movie while he was directing E.T. But he had already wanted to make Poltergeist, so he said, "Okay, sure, fine." But he so he that's where he got Toby Hooper to stand in and pretend to be the director. But if you watch that movie again, you can see Steven Spielberg's fingerprints all over. He totally directed that movie. So he pencil whipped it to be able to do mm -hmm. two at a time right. instead of, you know, following through with his contract. Yep. Loophole. No, that's it. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. Happens yeah. every day. Yeah. Well, I, I feel much better knowing that information. Oh, and the movie is definitely more entertaining now that you know that Toby Hooper <laughs> was a fake. Yeah. That was a good, that fraud. was a good, like, they tried to remake that and that failed miserably. Like. Yes. You can't remake that if you're not going to actually just remake the exact same thing with better quality. I mean, it, it was a good it better story. It's as, it's well, as good obviously, as that's what I'm saying. I mean, you really be. have to yep. have a way to make it exactly the same and better, and you can't do that. So, mm -hmm. I did. Li I did like that movie. Yep. All right. So, uh, of the top five, my last one is uh, Alien. Mm -hmm. You know, which you've all discussed on this before, but yeah. Yep, Alien is great. Yes. Absolute greatness. Love Sigourney Weaver in Alien. Well, she's good in pretty much everything she does. Nah, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Oh, I don't know about all of them apples, but I think... Is there anything we all can agree on? Anything at all? Boobies are great. Yep, I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> we can all agree yeah, but you don't have to so, carry them, so... I have a, uh, another fun story involving you about Alien. <laughs> oh, and okay. that is, uh, the first time I ever saw the movie Alien, it came on like HBO or some shit. So uh, I was in high school, and I'd always wanted to see it. So I see that the movie's coming on. It's coming on at like eleven o'clock at night or something. So I ask, you know, can I watch? Can I stay and watch Alien? And it was a school night, and they were like, "Yes, you can." So I stay up, and we watch about I don't know thirty minutes of the movie or whatever. So uh, the order of age of the siblings: I'm the oldest, then Reagan, then Stacy, then Stephanie. Okay, so Stacy and Stephanie have to go to bed. We stay up. We watch like thirty minutes of the movie. And then uh, dad says, okay, Reagan, go to bed. And she goes, what? I don't want to go to bed. I want to finish the movie. He's like, nope, you have to go to bed. She goes, well, that's not fair. Chris gets to stay up. And she said, well, Stacy and uh, Stephanie went to bed earlier, and you got to stay up. She goes, yeah, but I'm older than them. And they said, well, Chris is older than you. And she was like, god damn it. Yeah, she hates when <laughs> yeah. her own logic goes <laughs> yeah. against her. Yeah. That's still true to this day. I think that was probably the... The thing I said the most. That's not fair. Because mm -hmm. Chris got everything. I don't think they knew how to say no to him. What? Okay, I think you are remembering life wrong. Because I don't recall thinking to myself, oh, anything I want is mine. I, I literally could not get a driver's license because you didn't want one. And I wasn't getting one until you got yours. Well, I'm sorry. You're not. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, so. Now that I'm getting the top, what I consider to be the top five greatest horror movies I've made, I have a couple more down here uh, genre wise which ones are the greatest in certain genres so my favorite monster of all time is werewolf that's, that's just my favorite and I think the greatest werewolf movie ever made is an American werewolf in London personally mm -hmm. now um, 
I don't think that there's been a perfect werewolf movie. Uh, although I do think that is the best one. I don't, I don't think it's as good as it could be. You know, as good as the movie is, there's not enough werewolf in the movie. I mean, you, you know? didn't think that Teen Wolf wasn't the greatest. Well, movie? Teen Wolf was pretty great. Teen Wolf was pretty great. <laughs> Teen Wolf was pretty great. But I, I feel like they still have not made the ultimate werewolf movie. So get on that, Hollywood. Right. Or come to me. I'll help you. Either way. They have not made That's the best one, but the only flaw in the movie is that there's not enough werewolf in it. I mean, that is the greatest werewolf ever put on film. And that is the greatest werewolf transformation ever put on film. But there's just not enough of werewolf in the movie. I don't know. Michael J. Fox did pretty good. Angie, do you know what the show is on Netflix um, with Famke Jansen on it? It's like a series. I, oh, I actually watched some of that. They have a werewolf transformation on there, and I was very like the show was not that great. I don't know I what you're talking about. It. I don't know what the show is. But um, yeah, their their werewolf transformation is unbelievable. What hmm. about Jacob? Jacob does a great transformation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Hemlock Grove. Hemlock Grove. Hemlock yeah. Grove. Yeah. yeah, I didn't watch that movie. I didn't watch that. And movie. when yeah. they come back to human form, they're naked. They don't magically have clothes on. Excellent. As long as they're women, Excellent. as long as they're women werewolves, I'm down for that. Right. I just, I, I was, I'm really impressed with their formation into okay. the werewolves. Right. I, I was, right. you know, like All I said, right. the, I stopped watching the series because the show itself wasn't that good, but right. I was impressed by that. Okay. Right. So my, uh, what I think is the greatest vampire movie is just for us for not necessarily technically. But just the most fun, in my opinion, the most fun movie to watch in the vampire genre is uh, From Dusk Till Dawn. Mm. That is a very rewatchable vampire movie. You yes. Know? You know, there's, there's been better movies that have been directed better, you know. But it's just that is just such a fun movie to watch. And there's a lot of titties in it. Yes. So. Also, why I have watched it more than right. once. <laughs> even though I'm not a horror fan. Right, yeah. But so it's not. It's not. I've seen that movie. A yeah, it's of horror times. in the sense that it has vampires that kill people. But it's not horror. And like, it does not try to scare you. It's it's mm. more of just an action horror movie. Sure. You know, a shoot 'em up. Yeah, I, I agree. Horror is too big of a genre. Yeah, it is. Well, I don't know about that. <clears throat> I, I think, think that's what is. makes it so good because it encompasses so many things. Mm. It can fall. But yeah. I think the yeah, rules it makes are it hard to narrow it down. Yeah. I think the rules are very lax in horror. Okay, so I disagree with everybody, but anyway, continuing on. My favorite slasher movie is, of course, John Carpenter's Halloween. That took me several years to watch. Thanks, Becky. Thanks, Becky. Preach. <laughs> yeah, that this movie. Time I have never wasted. That movie broke the mold on slasher films. I mean, okay. every slasher film that came after that steals from Halloween. Nightmare on Elm Street, no good for you. That's not a slasher film. It's Scream. not a slasher. Not really. I like Scream. Not really. He don't Scream have like good. knives. He for does fingers. have knives. He does have knives. Okay, so what do you, how do you define slasher? Because now I'm interested. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Scream. if he got knives for no, fingers, he does have knives. He kills fingers. people he with knives. He does have knives for fingers. Doesn't that make it a slasher? Oh, well, okay. Scream. I don't know if it Fine, does slasher. or not. Fine, slasher. Scream. What about Scream? It was good. Yeah, Scream was good. Yeah, Scream also, was good. not a horror. It's it's more no, it's a slasher. Yeah, it is a slasher. It is a slasher. It's more stupid. But it's a slasher. Okay. So, and it, it got worse as they. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. yeah no, they, they never should have made more. I like Christine. What, you, what genre would you call that? That's, that's a horror. That is also it's a horror. No, but like what what subcategory would it be? I mean, it's, because it's, it's, yeah. suspense. It's almost. I guess it would be. Uh, actually, I guess it would be maybe like a haunted a haunted car. Yeah, vehicles, right? Yeah. Christine because Christine. there's another yeah. like what is the big uh, maximum overdrive? Maximum with overdrive. The big yeah. giant eighteen wheeler that yeah. kills people. Like there's a there's yeah. probably a. That's probably a, a, a genre. Those. I don't know what that's called. Then you have horror, suspense, and action. Yeah. I mean, they they label stuff like three categories sure, now. Sure. It's Things ridiculous. Fall into multiple categories. Yep. All right. My fun. Uh, so my favorite zombie movie is a, a foreign film, Train to Busan. Oh yeah. Train to Busan. Oh yeah. Perfect. Yep. Subtitles and shit. Oh yeah, I love. Subtitles. My favorite zombie is Shaun of the Dead. Uh, that's pretty it's good. That's pretty Night of the Living Dead. That's pretty good. Yeah, Night, Night of the Living Dead's Dead. good. Yeah, Night of the Living I remember Dead watching that with y'all. Night of the Living Dead is good. Yeah. When good y'all first moved out. You know, they, they, uh, when they made that movie, they fucked up and they forgot to file the correct paperwork. So the movie immediately went into public domain. So they didn't make any fucking money from that movie. Now, right. they made money in the sense that he got famous for making it and then got to make other movies. But he didn't make a dime off of that movie. Nice. That's why every time you watch any fucking movie, especially horror movies, and they're watching a movie in the movie, it's always Night of the Living Dead because it's. In public domain, they don't have to pay anybody for it. Love it. Yep. So, Love it. 
Moral of the story, file your paperwork if you make a movie correctly. Mm. Yeah. Next time we make a movie, we're definitely That's following it. the right That's paperwork. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Their movie was great, but they made it. So the final uh, movie I just want to mention is uh, one of the original universal classic monster movies, and that's Creature from the Black Lagoon. And if you get a chance, watch it in 3D, because it was originally made in 3D, and it's really, it really is actually an excellent movie in 3D. It takes it to a whole other level. Love it. Love it. I can't believe you didn't mention Psycho. Yeah, Psycho's okay. Psycho's mm-hmm. okay. Or The Blob. Yeah, The Blob, the Blob is remake is, right? is amazing, yes. Or Kingdom of the Spiders. Uh, birds. Kingdom I mean, of the there's Spiders lots of good. movies I could have talked about, right? but I had to narrow With it down. William Shatner. I had to narrow it down. We actually have so, that. Yeah. Oh, I need to borrow it. I know you did. Because you were talking about Day of the Animal, and I was thinking birds. Well, I know. I don't think, yeah. Well, the actually, birds. I don't, actually, I don't like the birds. I do not like the birds. Yep. I'm, invasion of the Body Snatchers? I do like the Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The original... And yeah, the yeah. first remake. Yeah, yeah. Because there's the like 20 thing. remakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The pods. Yeah. You, know, yeah, pods. you know a lot of horror Oh, yeah. Yeah, you see Old school I think stuff you're... that didn't scare the doo doo out. Oh, okay. All right. It's all good. All right. Okay. You know, it's not really scary at all. All right. Okay. But when The Exorcist was made, that changed Yeah, the that animal. was probably not the best idea to start that as your first real horror movie. Oh, it yeah, was. Yeah, that was, that was not wise. It was not good for me. Yeah. I was I was unhealthy for two weeks. <laughs> Have you seen the Imagine being named after that movie. I couldn't watch that shit till I was eighteen. Well. Okay. So well, I think we talked long enough. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, recommend a movie and we can call this one done. Okay. So I'm go actually, ahead. I'm recommend. gonna uh, recommend a horror comedy. What I truly believe is the best horror comedy ever made. Cocaine Bear. Yeah, oh cocaine. no, I'm afraid I know which one it's gonna be. We'll see. So, this movie was made in 2010. The name of the movie is Tucker and Dale. Oh, my God. Tucker and Dale versus Evil. <laughs> Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Because you don't have taste in movies. I think it's hilarious. One single part no, made me laugh. No, no, incorrect. No, well. That's oh, you, yes. No, well, that is no, true. No, that is a no, fact. No, actually, that probably is true because you have no sense of humor. But I'll tell you this. Uh, the plot of the movie... Uh, it so, stars, first of all, it stars Alan Tudyk and uh, Tyler I think you have Tyler to say Levine. the title again if you want people to watch it because it's been kind of run over. Tucker and Dale versus Evil. All right. Okay? The plot of the movie is there's these two hillbillies that have saved up enough money to buy this dilapidated cabin out in the woods. <laughs> and they wanted it to be like their little fishing, their vacation home, you know. So they just bought it. They're all excited to go there for the first time, fix it up, have a fishing trip. They're all excited. While they go, while they're headed there, they run into some college kids who are going to go camping right next to where, as it turns out, right next to where their cabin is. So what happens is, the uh, college kids in the movie are very aware of horror movie tropes. So they, the comedy comes in as they start to misinterpret circumstances to believe that the two guys are backwoods hillbilly cannibal rapist murderer slashers that are out to get them. And so everything that happens, they misinterpret as they're trying to kill us. We have to kill them first. So it's a back and forth. And, of course, the two hillbillies are like, what the hell's going on? Why are these college kids trying to kill us? You know, it's a whole back and forth thing. And it just, the, the confusion just continues to escalate until this climactic ending, which is hilarious. Hilarious. There, there is, there's a lot of references to different horror movies, obviously. You know, they make fun of specific horror movies. And, and there's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre joke, which is mwah, Worth the price of admission. Chef's kiss. Okay? You can look at me with disappointment all day, <laughs> but I guarantee you the audience will be like, thank you, Chris. We actually have a lot of friends that like You see how she got them arms folded? Yeah, I see that. She's not face. happy. She's not I happy. see that look. She's not awesome. happy about this. Look, he <clears throat> recommended a Rob Zombie movie to me, and that's time I'll never get back. Which one? That's why you should learn after the first 72 <laughs> movies that he recommended that were garbage poo-poo. Don't watch the movies. No, I don't anymore. Now I'm, I'm curious. Which one was it? Which one was it, Chris? Let's say some names. Lords Zombie. of Salem. It was Lords of Salem. Yeah, that one. Did you like House of a Thousand Corpses? I didn't watch that crap. After Lords of Salem, what reason was there to ever watch a Rob Zombie wasn't, movie? <laughs> wasn't House of a Thousand Corpses before that? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. Well, I'll give you this. Rob Zombie is total crap now. He can't make a movie to save his life now. But his first... Oh, no, no, no. You cannot recommend his film and then say no, he's crap. No, no, no. Now no, he's now crap. He's now crap. he's crap. Well, but I when he first started, he, he made... He was crap. Yeah. I need he... to see no penis in a church. Okay. All right. Well, take yeah, it out of context. Take it out of context. Yeah, you definitely know that she has uh, yeah. an aversion to seeing penis. 
in a church. <laughs> that doesn't belong so, to you. Reese is like, you should have known that going in, that she is not a fan of penis under any circumstance. Do you like to watch penis on TV? Do I know? I am absolutely not a fan of penis, but I think that that's a given. Well, (laughs) on that note, I believe we'll uh, call the show closed. So uh, I would like to mention that we are now on multiple different platforms. That is correct. Uh, We're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon. Radio Public. Radio um, Public, Audible, Am- Amazon. Yeah. So look for uh, us on your favorite I'm platform, and uh, there's we might be there. You know, yeah. you never know. Yeah, That's we're right. also on Facebook. We're on X. Yep. Formerly known as Twitter. Oh my gosh. Yeah, give us give us the five <laughs> star reviews, and uh, we need to at some point we're gonna have to start figuring out. How many people are actually watching these movies that you recommend and what people actually think of them? Yeah. Because we have an opinion here that majority rules pretty much says you suck. <laughs> so I want you to have some redemption, you know? So let's hear from you guys. Yeah, please get on Facebook and get on our webpage, Mike up or Shut Up, and tell us whether you watched any of Chris's movies and whether you liked them or did not like them. That's right. We'd like to know. Well, I've been uh, posting movies um, all week for Halloween. So Excellent. If, I don't know if they've liked the movies that I've posted so far, but uh, if you have... Uh, yeah, let, let us, us know. know. Get that. in there and comment. Yeah. Tell us what you think of the movies. Which, that's a rhetorical question, because we all know the movies are amazing. So, of course. That's all right. Of course they are. But, all right, so let's uh, let's call us with close and uh, yeah. get prepared for next week. So, uh, Guys, thanks for listening. Yeah. We appreciate you. Love you. Yeah. We're out. Big dog.